Okay, so I'm going to be getting you some information directly from uh, Dr. Aaron Steen's report, Reducing the Fire Hazard in Aluminum Wired Homes. Um, he's the fellow that's been studying this stuff for over 40 years. He was hired by the CPC uh, with a company through a company called Wright Malta Corporation. Or they hired a company called Wright Malta Corporation uh, back in, looks like it was originally set up in uh, 1982, this first report. And so I'm imagining that he was hired in 1981, the company was, and he was the lead engineer on this particular project, which was to study aluminum wire connections and connectors to rectify the situation. Um, I'm not going to be going through the whole thing now, but uh, I would say that certainly if you are interested in getting a look at this entire report, you can go on to my website, aluminumwiringdangers.com, and at the top there, one of the bars at the top, you'll see uh, Dr. Aaron Steen's report. Just click on that. You can download it there and review the entire thing for yourself. If you are an electrician or working with an electrical contractor and you're looking to do this type of work, I highly suggest, please, that you review this report before you start trying to correct people's hazards in their walls because uh, we have seen where electricians have gone in and they've used this material or I should say materials that they shouldn't be using in corrections and in one particular case a house almost burnt down but I'm going to be talking specifically today about the ideal 65 connector which is touted as a solution uh, as a connector for aluminum wiring to copper and aluminum wire connections in order to uh, get rid of the problem of the hazards that are caused by creep, what's called creep, in aluminum wiring. So let's get down right to the area. Uh, now I did have an interview with Dr. Aaron Steen and uh, although I recorded it, uh, I, as it turns out I was recording it specifically for myself because he asked me not to quote him on anything that he said on the interview on the telephone call but he said I could quote him anything uh, from this report that he put together and the most recent of which was done in I'll scroll up here November 25th 2011 okay so it's very very recent he is continuing to this day last I talked to him was in summer of 2000 or spring of 2014 and he was still very much he does very much take this seriously and he recognizes the dangers of what's going on and the bad information that's out there and he still makes it his life's ambition to get people aware of the problems so I'm gonna see if I'm gonna help him out here anyway we're talking about the, using the ideal number 65 twister connector and I'm just gonna give you a quick little video of what that looks like right now I picked it up in Home Depot here in Calgary so just hang on for a second and here it is Okay, so let's see what Dr. Aronstein, with his thousands of studies or uh, connections that he studied over the 40 years, let's see what he's got to say about pigtailing using the ideal number 65 twister connector. After 1987, when UL, that's Underwriters Laboratories down in the States, it's, a very, it's the equivalent to Canada Standard, or Canadian Standards Association up here in, in Canada, or it could be Canada Standards Association, um, they're like sisters. Okay, when UL adopted a revised, revised standard UL486C applicable to twist-on connectors for aluminum wire, twist-on connectors were no longer being marked in the USA as UL listed for aluminum wire applications. In 1995, UL accepted a twist-on connector, the Ideal 65 Twister for aluminum to copper wire combinations, including those commonly used in the pigtailing retrofit. The Ideal 65 has been heavily promoted has been heavily promoted for that application. The connector is essentially the same as twist-on connectors that had performed poorly in previous testing, the major difference being that it is pre-filled with inhibitor compound. Based on its construction, there is good reason to question the long-term performance of the Ideal 65. Because of its UL listing, however, most electrical inspectors would accept this connector for pigtailing of aluminum wiring. As soon as it appeared on the market, the Consumer Product Safety Commission CPSC, questioned UL's listing of this connector for the aluminum wire pigtailing wire combinations. Although the manufacturer claims that the connector has been thoroughly tested for the application, neither, man 
Neither the manufacturer or UL have released any detailed test data. The manufacturer states the, manufacturer states the connector has received CSA certification, that's Canada Standards Association certification, for the same wire combinations. Information developed so far indicates the following. The manufacturer did not initially claim that the connector is intended for use in the pigtailing retrofit application. Instead, the manufacturer stated to CPSC that the Ideal 65 is intended for such applications as connecting lighting fixtures and ceiling fans. Ideal's engineering manager at that time committed to CPSC that the company would change its advertising and instructional information accordingly. But Ideal did not follow through on that commitment. Now just a quick, uh, the CPSC uh, is a government agency, Consumer Product Safety Commission. Okay? UL did not independently perform the heat cycle life tests required by their standard. These tests were performed by the manufacturer with UL accepting the manufacturer's results. The connector was not heat cycle tested for the common pigtailing wire combinations with current passing through the aluminum to aluminum wire path in an aluminum to aluminum to a copper splice. The heat cycle tests that were performed by the manufacturer on the ideal 65 twister connector were not done by using aluminum wire of the type actually installed in homes built in the 1960s and early 1970s. The CSA certification was based on UL's acceptance for listing. CSA did not independently evaluate the Ideal 65 connector. In fact, the use of a zinc-plated steel spring in the connector violates a CSA general requirement for connectors for aluminum wiring. The inhibitor compound plastic shell of the connection in combination can ignite readily and burn freely. This increases the chance of fire ignition if connection failure occurs. Okay, next page. Independent testing of the Ideal 65 twister has demonstrated the following. Installed according to the manufacturer's instruction, without abrasion or pre-twisting, the connector does not reliably establish low resistance connections. This finding contradicts the manufacturer's claim that particles in the inhibitor within the connector eliminate the need for abrasion of the wires. The Ideal 65 connector does not consistently pass the UL heat cycle test requirement when tested with aluminum wire of the type actually installed in homes with current passing through the aluminum to aluminum path in a pigtailing aluminum aluminum copper splice. The performance of the Ideal 65 twister is essentially the same as that of poorly performing twist-on connectors previous, previously evaluated for the aluminum wire pigtailing application. Additionally, field burnouts have now been reported with the Ideal 65 connectors in their rated applications. With CPSC skeptical and requesting that UL withdraw its listing, the manufacturer initially agreed that the connector is not for the pigtailing retrofit application. Independent tests clearly demonstrating poor performance and field failures reported. The use of the Ideal 65 twister connector for the pigtailing application is definitely not recommended. Definitely not recommended. If the copalum repair is not available, use the Alumicon connector. See section 1C. Well, we'll cover that in just a little bit. But here's some pictures that he took. Uh, all right, A, these two failed splices are adhered together by the melted plastic insulating shells. Severe, B, severe failure, plastic shell melted and charred. The charring indicates that it had probably ignited. So this is figure five, the field failures of aluminum to copper splices made with ideal number 65 connectors.
Well, folks, I don't know about you, but that seems pretty clear to me. One of the top, uh, one of the top engineer scientists who's been studying this stuff, stuff for 40 years or so is saying, don't use it for a permanent repair. Seems pretty clear to me. Anyway, if you want more information, please feel free to go to my website, aluminumwiringdangers.com, and you can find out exactly how to repair them. Thanks very much for listening. Oh, and once again, you can go to the website to download this report and view it for yourself. Thanks very much for listening.